It's the Games and Grabs podcast. This week, we talk the Nintendo Switch Lite, AEW's Fight for the Fallen, and give predictions for this Sunday's Extreme Rules. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 99 of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello! Finn, how you doing? I'm doing okay, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm tired. I'm running on fume because yeah, I stayed no, up no, to our uh, AEW last night and oh, yes. finished at like 5 in the morning Ooh. UK Ouch, yeah. time. Um, so it was ridiculously long, unnecessarily long. But uh, we'll go into that in a little while. But yeah, well, other than that, I'm I'm doing good. Cool, good stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to talk. We're gonna, we'll talk AEW. Finn hasn't seen it all, um, uh, so just be mindful that there is going to be some some AEW spoilers ahead if uh, you haven't watched the show yet. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk Extreme Rules, which is taking place uh, tonight as of recording. Yep. Yep. And we'll start things as we always do with what have you been playing? So Finn, what have you been playing? Um, I'm playing more Mortal Kombat 11. Okay. Surprisingly, uh, I finally got to uh, Demigod in the Combat League, which is like third on the top. Congratulations! Is, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, further than I thought I'd get. Um, I'm, st- I'm gonna stop there. Then I'm gonna stop playing it because I don't want to <laughs> derank and go back down again. It's like right, I'm good. That's enough. <laughs> stop there. You done, you done completely with online now, or? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a break from it and I'll come back to it for the next combat league probably. Um, I've only got one trophy left for the platinum and I have to play a group battle in the, uh, Towers of Time. There hasn't been a group battle for like weeks. I was just now waiting for one to turn up. Um, there was ah. a, there was, yeah, there was a tag team one, uh, today, or well, this last few days, um, which is almost there, but it's only with two people. So I need like one more person and I'll get there. But yeah, <laughs> so that's annoying, but I'll tell you So close. So close. Um, that's that. I've also been playing some more Mario Maker because it was story mode and that. That's all fun. How are you finding it? Yeah, really fun. I like it. The story mode's really fun as well. Nice. Uh, lo- loads of like Nintendo made levels and yeah, it's cool. I love it. Cool. And uh, that's about it this week. Um, just those two mostly. Uh, how about you? What have you been playing? Well, I too have been playing Super Mario Maker 2. Nice. Do you like it? Yes, very much so. Um, I've, I've been playing the story. Uh, I've not sort of jumped into anything else yet. I wanted to sort of uh, play the Nintendo made levels and sort of really get my head around what the game was about and uh, stuff like that. But I think it's great. You know, I love the little details. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, I love the way the levels are made. I think it's very, very smart. Yeah, I just think it's a really cool game. I think it's even if you sort of aren't going to jump in and create levels yourself, because, you know, I'm not creative enough to do that. Yes, I but, um <laughs> Like, there are so many levels on there already that you could just jump in and play. I mean, honestly, there's probably infinite gameplay in there. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can play forever. But uh, I like the story. I think it's cool. Um, like, the the, the dog, <laughs> like, destroys the castle, and you've got to rebuild it <laughs> oh, by yeah. playing the levels. And I, li- I like the way it works. I like the progression. And I think it's just a, a nice, fun game to play. Hmm. And I really like it, yeah. I wasn't going to pick it up, but um, I managed to get it fairly cheap. So, um, nice. because of reward points etc but oh, nice. um i thought yeah I'll, I'll take a i'll take the leap and i did and i'm glad i did it's really really good good yeah i'm playing, playing through the uh like endless modes like um there's some really good levels in there but there's a lot of rubbish like, i've been playing through the normal normal mode one just to like see how far i can get and yeah there's, there's a lot of there's stuff obviously made by like kids who, and you can tell which ones they are just like random stuff placed all over the place it's like hey, all right another one of these cool so that's, that, that'd be what my levels look like just like <laughs> in the sky and it's crap just, like that and it'd just be it'd be so awful and rubbish but uh yeah but yeah and there are a few gems in there that it is worth uh, uh sticking with for sure yeah i mean i, I think I, I mean once i've sort of uh, played through the story and there's a just a, a heap of levels in the story mode oh, yeah, um yeah. you know in order to rebuild the castle and I like that there's uh, other characters have got missions as well. Uh, I think that's cool. It's just, it's just a cool game. I, I like it. It looks great. I love the the switch between, um, you know, like new level, new looking levels and really old school looking levels. I think it's yeah. just a really cool game. And I, I'm so happy that I picked it up. I love Nintendo exclusives. They're just. Yes. They're, 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 yeah. They're, they're, you can't go wrong at all. They're, um, I mean, they're, they're a class apart. They really are. I mean, obviously, PlayStation has their amazing, you know, movie blockbuster-esque exclusives, but the Nintendo exclusives are just something else. They're really, really cool. 
yeah, nice, nice jolly games, like nice happy friendly games. Yeah, and just super fun to play. I mean, I've been playing Smash Brothers as well again this nice. week. I've been sort of getting back into that. Uh, still really, really enjoying it. Um, I just, it's just so, so addictive. The gameplay is super addictive. Um, and everything about it is just gorgeous. You know, the character models are amazing. The level design is amazing. The And, it, you know, the way that everything is designed is just to perfection. You know, like Nintendo don't half-ass their exclusives. <laughs> they they just, they're like, right, okay, we're making this game and it's going to come out at this time. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. They've got a game coming out. No delays, no nothing like that. And it comes out and it's fucking perfect. So, yeah, exactly. you know, it's, Nintendo are just, they're killing it. I mean, they've got so many great games coming out this year as well. Yeah, it's crazy. So many good things. I think Astral Chain is next month. Um, the I next exclusive think. is Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which is next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. They have that soon. Bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so it's, like, it's in five days' time. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. But and then, uh, then, yes, the next one after that is Astral Chain, which looks great as well. Yeah, I've come over that. Awesome. Um, what else have we been playing? I've been playing some Mario Kart. I've been playing my Switch a lot, actually, because I've moved it uh, back into the front room TV and I've just sort of had it docked and been playing it on the TV. Nice. Um, but I find when I do that, all I play is Switch. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Because I just said, there's loads, loads of awesome Nintendo exclusives. Like, it's hard not to <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I, I intend to um, finish off Pokemon Let's Go as well. Because, uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, now that I, I, I like playing it on the TV now because I've got the Pokeball. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like just sit, it's so relaxing to play as well because there's no it's not there's no effort involved in it whatsoever because <laughs> you hold the ball in one hand and you just you could you could literally sit there and have your phone in the other hand and play the game at the same time. You have to my Pikachu is so overpowered I could pretty much just blast through the whole game with just Pikachu. Yeah, I think that's the one the one tiny issue I had with the uh, the Let's Go games that they're very very easy. It's very <laughs> easy. I mean, like, Let's Go is very very easy. It's very yeah. pick up and play. Uh, it's very for new people I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm friendly. hoping to be yeah oh for sure I'm hoping we get a more um, not adult experience but. Um, Tougher experience with Sword and Shield. Yeah, more of a challenge for sure. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, but I think you know because you know there there are going to be people new to Nintendo with the Switch. Oh yeah. So you know I think it makes sense uh, in from that perspective to make Let's Go just a little bit more accessible because it gives new people um, you know a chance to adjust to what the games are about and and stuff like that. So I get it, but it, and it's a great game anyway. So I'm not going to shit on it or anything. Oh no, of course not. Yeah. So, uh, and I've been playing Mario Odyssey. So, like I said, I've been playing oh, yeah. Switch a lot recently, <laughs> and Breath of the Wild as well. I'm trying to uh, wow. trying to make my way through that very slowly. But um, I really want to play the, the DLC of Breath of the Wild. My my, my favorite is when I go back and playing DLC. It's like I forget like how to actually play the game. I have to relearn how to play it before jumping yeah. back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, like Mario Odyssey is just incredible. It's just oh, a yeah. joy to play. Insane. Yeah. Again, it's it's another one of those cases of Nintendo don't don't half ass things. Oh no, definitely not. Definitely not with Mario. Yeah, oh, definitely not. Yeah, it's not like <laughs> Sonic, where they're just like, "Oh, here's a game. Let's just fucking throw it together and put Sonic as the main character." I guess. Oh, or Sonic. I know. <laughs> I know, poor guy. But yeah, yeah, Mario Odyssey is amazing. Cool. Good stuff. But I'm saying I'm saying things that people already know. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what <laughs> I've been playing this week. I've been playing uh, mostly Switch and thoroughly enjoying myself. Awesome. Um, I think what I also love about the Switch is it makes me like really like go back to a time when I loved gaming so much. Yeah. You know what I mean by that? Like Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Take it back to the good old days. Not, yeah, you're not trophy hunting, you're not you know, as much as I would love a trophy slash achievement system on the Switch, me too. I feel like when I play them games, I don't need it. Like, yeah. I'm enjoying them so much that like the experience of the game itself is enough to actually is enough for me to just enjoy playing it. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah, definitely. But I mean, hey, look, the the the, com- the competitor in me wants achievements and trophies, but the uh, the child in me, the gamer in me, just is happy with the experience, and I think uh, that's enough. Cool, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, speaking of trophies, uh, I I've made it just to, can't speak third decision to uh, not play, not buy any more you no know, shitty platinum games like I need exists for platinum trophies, like mm. like we- super weekend mode, whatever that's called. Uh, and shit like that, because <laughs> I, I was playing. I, I bought a bunch a little while ago, and I was sitting playing last weekend. I was like, it's just wasting time playing these shitty games uh, that I don't want to play, and you know, aren't, I haven't had any thought put into them. It's like, why am I bothering? It's then for sort of, you know, 
like pointless trophies that no one's gonna look at. Yeah, and then their market <laughs> is people. That, I mean, they know what they're doing because their market is people who are trophy hunters and they just want yeah. an easy platinum trophy. But for me, earning a platinum trophy or a thousand gamer score should be something special. Should yeah, be something you've had to to graft for. Look, don't get me wrong. I've got a couple of shitty platinum trophies, <laughs> but um, you know there are ones in there that I'm really proud of. Like Rocket League, for example, is a cool yeah. platinum trophy to have because I've grafted for it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Five Star Wrestling, not a great game, but I had to graft to get that platinum trophy, <laughs> and I got it. A fair play. Yeah, uh, how can do that? You know, and <laughs> you know, I, I feel like if you finish a game in ten minutes to get a platinum trophy, it's not very well. It's not earned. No. Like, my name is Mayo. What a load of oh, bollocks that is. You know? Yeah, what's, what's the other one? The Little Adventure on the Prairie. Like, that is the worst game on PS4 by far. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely like how, terrible. How that got A got on PS4 in the first place and B has a Platinum Trophy is insane. Well, it's that same company that make all these games, isn't it? There's, a, there's one company yeah. that, like, put all these easy Platinums out and they know exactly what they're doing. And mm. that's why they sell and that's how they make their money. They, they make these games for about 40p and then. <laughs> They put them out for two quid or whatever because they're an easy platinum and people jump on it straight away. It's Yeah, it's, it's going to be They know their market, but it's a shitty thing, I think. Yeah, I think Sony needs to be more um, <laughs> more um, punishing with their trophies. Like, if you have, to, you have to, like, game has to last a certain, amount, a certain length of time, it has to cost so much for you to earn have a platinum trophy. The thing is, though, there was a time when there was only certain games could have a platinum trophy. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Strange. But Sony seems to have, like, gone super... Lenient when what they need to be doing is being super vigilant and being like, "Look, come on, we, yeah. this, this game sucks, <laughs> and the only reason that it's here and people buy it is because it has a platinum trophy." Um, I think just, I just think it's cheap. Um, yeah, and I don't like it basically. But it's look, people have their own opinions, but I think a, a, a trophies should be earned, not given. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, every trophy, every platinum trophy I get from now on will be well earned. Like the Mortal Kombat one, for example, will be. I mean, yeah, holy shit, man. That that is, (laughs) that's a, fighting games do not have easy platinum trophies usually. I mean, Tekken Tekken 7 was relatively easy, but you still had to do a bunch of stuff in the game to get it. You didn't Hmm. just have to play. Like I I did one uh, not long ago, and you literally had to play through the first world in the game. There was 10 fucking worlds in this game, right? Maybe even more. I I think it was like Jack and Jill DX or something. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Loads and loads of worlds in the game, and all you had to do was do the first one to get all the trophies in the platinum. Yeah, ridiculous. what's the point in the rest of the game? I'm not. I turned it off as soon yeah. as I got the platinum. I'm like, well, I don't want this game anymore. Who fucking cares? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's pointless. The, the games don't give you a reason to play beyond the platinum. No, they're all very basic games that you wouldn't want to play anyway under normal circumstances. It's yeah. like, oh, why bother? But I'm glad you're taking the stand, Finn. I'm yeah. glad you're taking the, the the high ground after getting so many shitty platinums. Yeah, I refuse to give these companies more money because it's shitty. It is, yeah. They put, yeah. you know, I, I understand the allure of it because people want their platinum count to be high or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um, like, I, said, I mean, I think people should be earning their trophies instead of like playing these four mini games to get the platinum trophy because you've not earned it. Yeah, I mean, there are people out there with like seven hundred platinum trophies, and they look at their list and it's like all oh, just a cheap shit. Like, but like, 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 buy in multiple like. Um, different accounts but like in different countries and they're all stacked just like you can get five mm. platinums for one game it's like that's that's not good that's not well earned <laughs> it's also not a fun way to game in no, my it's opinion not at all no it's you know because for me gaming should be a fun satisfying experience you know like to take you out from real life exactly yeah but if you're you know and if you've sort of grafted away at a game for hours and hours like 40 hours or maybe even more to get some platinums yeah. You know, then that you, that is gratification that you've got your money's worth out of that game. Exactly. Um, but you know, to go, oh right, I'm going to play this game, and then I'm going to play through it again to get the the stack on North America, and then I'm going to go to the fucking <laughs> Chinese one and do that, and it's just like, it's so shit and stupid. Yeah. I just don't get it. Look, again, as always, there are going to be people who listen to this podcast that are definitely going to disagree with us and love their platinum trophies, and that is fine. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, but not. You know, just on anyone. I'm glad this <laughs> this podcast is taking the stand, and yes. we're we're Sunny and Finn against shitty platinums. Yes, absolutely. There you go. Good. All right. Speaking of the Switch, um, which you were talking about like ten minutes ago, uh, a new Switch console has been announced: the uh, yeah. Switch Lite. Yeah. Um. What do you think to it? 
Um, interesting idea. Um, I see what they're going for. Like the three DS has pretty much had its day now. Um, so need a new, need that new handheld cost, uh, console, which you could have with the original Switch, but uh, you want a lighter, easier to carry around uh, Switch and uh, get the Switch Lite, which is a cool idea. I think it's fair enough. I see the appeal for sure. I mean, you know, the, the 3DS has a huge, like huge, huge, huge following. Oh, like, yeah. so, so many there, games. <laughs> there, there, are, there are handheld gamers out there. Yeah, and absolutely. they, you know, they don't want the proper Switch or whatever for, for whatever reason, even though you can just use it as a handheld, you don't even have to dock it. Yeah, just true. dock it to charge if you really want to. Just... You don't have to. Yeah, um, exactly. So I get it. The only thing that I thought found slightly baffling about it is the the name because you can't actually switch anything. There's no <laughs> video output whatsoever. It's just yeah. you, there's no TV output at all. It's just a handheld console. Yeah, I mean, I guess they wanted to just, like keep brand name just so people yeah. don't get confused. Like, is a switch? It's look cool, like the I don't know, like the game switch. Oh, no wait, I'm still got a switch in it. <laughs> the game uh, player thing. Mm. It's like is that, so. Is it a switch or is it something different or blah, 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 blah. but. Uh, yeah, I guess this doesn't confuse people. I guess, and I, I can see why they would do that, and it makes perfect sense from uh, a business point of view, as yeah. far as Nintendo is concerned, for sure. Um, but you know, it's a cheaper price point, so you go. It's like one hundred ninety nine dollars, and and that's like it'd be one hundred and seventy quid or something here. Not like that, yeah. Uh, which is a great price point. Yeah. Uh, there's already a phenomenal selection of exclusive games and third parties as well. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, so if you don't have a Switch and you want to transition from your 3DS uh, to uh, another handheld, then this is an absolute no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Makes you're sense. getting you're getting you know home console quality games on a handheld, which is um, insane. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mind blowing. Yeah, you know, the, the you know people are like, oh, the Nintendo the Switch Lite has you know transitioned into the vita 2 it's like no no it hasn't because <laughs> this will sell and has and really has really fucking good games <laughs> yeah. whereas the vita was dead in the water almost a year after it was released yeah like the switch already had more games worth playing than the vita has now definitely yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. This is just... no one gives two shits about the vita yeah like the people I mean, really it's... clinging onto it i mean hey i think the vita is a great console oh yeah sony awesome. fucked up yeah, just aren't any games on it. It's like there's two or three like super really good games that you need to play, but other than that, it's like yeah, yeah. That's it. There is like two or three good games. Um, Uncharted is good. Yeah. Uh, uh, else now. Uh, <laughs> but you can't get on something else. Like uh, a lot of people say, the Persona games are really great to play on the Vita. Oh yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, Persona Four Golden is amazing. But you're aiming at a very specific audience there. You're not aiming at everybody. Yeah, yeah, true. It's just amazing to me that Sony dropped the ball so bad with it because you've got this amazing technology, um, you know, and you've, you 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 had the sort of remote connectability to PlayStation Three and PlayStation Four, and you just didn't support it. And you know, Nintendo, the Switch has come along, blown it out of the water. I just, I don't know. I guess people are using it to get easy platinums or something. I, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, I I. It's only really messed up, and they should never enter the handheld market ever again. Uh, to be honest, I don't think anybody really, other than Nintendo, should enter the handheld market because <laughs> no, no one can compete. Yeah, that would be a tough time for sure. I mean, you look. I, I actually had a look at the sales figures of the day of uh, uh, of the Vita because I was really curious. And like the Vita had like ten million shipped or something like that. Oh, yeah. And then like you look at the Switch, and it's like seventy, like in the in the seventy to eighty maybe even going up to 100 million shipped. Wow. <laughs> and it's like, right, okay, so, I mean, that, that that's the DS. Oh, wow, blimey. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I, the Switch is way above the Vita as well, as, it, as you know, as it would be. But yeah. um, as to be honest, uh, I think as an all-round console, I don't think it gets much better than the Switch. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, for sure. Because you've got the best of both worlds. You want to, you yeah, going on a holiday, take your switch with you and you still get the same great game and great experience mm. um it, it you know you can't do that with anything else yeah i agree great little console so it's a good idea very and uh, very smart from nintendo uh going in cheaper and also you know having the same great games yeah good stuff yeah for cool. sure uh yeah so that's, i think it's about it for gaming gaming news yeah, pretty much. I think so. Um, not, not, you know, after E3, there isn't really an awful lot to ever speak about. Yeah, we're post post E3 lull at the minute. It's only Nintendo that do things out of the ordinary. 
<laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like, I think Sony are going to have like their version of the Direct uh, again at some point, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, and that'll be fine. It'll announce stuff. Yeah, probably. Probably announce a new Smash Brothers character. But, no, like... I mean like Sony. <laughs> Oh, Sony, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. They'll have their, uh, I forgot what they're called. What are they called? State of Play, is that what it is? Yeah, that's it, State of Play. They'll have one of them. Uh, people will moan that they've not shown The Last of Us or given us a release date or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, people are never happy about anything, but we, we, know, we know this. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yeah, Nintendo, because I think there's still like two Smash characters to be unveiled, isn't there? Yeah, it's two more, I think, yeah. Jesus, man, they're dragging it out. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They're, still, they're still a massive following for Smash Brothers, so I don't blame them. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Again, that's another thing. Like, um, like I play Mario Kart online, and there's always lobby straight away, straight into a lobby. <laughs> nice. You play Crash Team Racing online, fucking no one there. That's a shame. And I just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just said Mario Kart's been around for years and years and years, and the people are always going to be be there ready to play. But cool. everyone was hankering for Crash Team Racing. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's a shame. Um, this is why know. no other kart racer is as good as Mario Kart. Yeah, I mean, Crash and Racing is still. Uh, it's good. Hey, hey, look, it's good. <laughs> it is good, but it isn't as good as Mario Kart. Mm. Yeah, it no, isn't. I mean, you, you, you're right. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I admit defeat now is fine. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I still don't play the remake, so I can't talk. But uh, yeah, you're probably right. I'm right. I mean, Crash and Racing original is better than Mario Kart 64. No, but, it's uh, not. It is, oh, wait, Mario Kart 64? <laughs> I, I think Mario Kart 8 is the best kart racer ever made. Yeah, I'll probably agree with that. There you go. Cool, where we go? Crash Team <laughs> yeah, Racing loses. 1-0 yeah, to Mario Kart. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see once I play Mar- uh, Crash Team Racing remake. Yeah, play that and then play Mario Kart straight after and you'll be like, ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. I'll do that, yeah. I haven't played Mario Kart in forever. To be fair, I need to play it again. Yeah, I was destroying falls yesterday. I was loving nice. life. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really good at it now. I, I used to be awful at it, but like now I'm a, a drifting master, and I'm just uh, <laughs> just just killing it. Nice, good yeah. stuff. I wish I was that good at Smash Brothers, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible at Smash Brothers. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm awful at it, but it's great. So, anyway, wrestling. Yes, wrestling. So I was up to five in the morning watching the, the AEW show last night, and it was good. <laughs> Question mark. Yeah, um, I mean, there, there are a lot of things I like about what AEW are doing. Oh, yeah. And there are a lot of things I don't like about what AEW are doing. Yes. It's, um, I don't know. There's, I, I know they're new. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's something I can't put my finger on that just doesn't make me enjoy it as much as watching WWE. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, there's going to be growing pains for sure with the new and your new wrestling company. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Kenny Omega versus uh, Shima was awesome. Really great match. Uh, as was Hangman Page versus Kip Sabian. Really, really good match. Um, but, you know, then we got you know, Brandy Rhodes versus Ali was just terrible. It was Dude. awful. That's but, shame. I mean, Brandy Rhodes, was he wrestler in WWE? I don't think she was. was he? No, she no, was no like she was a ring she, she, she was like singing the national anthem and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's weird. Um, and Ali, you know, as you know, much to her credit, she's only been wrestling for three years. Wow. So, um, I mean, that that was a clusterfuck of a match. It was. It wasn't good at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, it same. really wasn't good. Um, I think their tag division is great. I think they've got a lot of depth to it, and I think when their tag team titles um, come to fruition, which obviously is going to be very soon. I think that mm. div- that tag division could be the best tag team division in the world. Yeah, it certainly could be. For sure. Uh, every- everything else, I'm just a little sketchy about. Um, I've never really been a big fan of Cody Rhodes, and I'm still not now. And what I hate about Cody Rhodes more than anything um, is the little digs he's taken at WWE. Uh, um, yeah. It's just establish yourself as your own brand. You don't need to take a swipe at WWE at every single show. You just don't need to. <laughs> Yeah, you know look, we get it. You, you're not in WWE. You 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 turn down new you turn down contracts in WWE to to create AEW, and that is great. Look, make a competitor, try to bring in change, but you don't need to always take shots at WWE. You just don't need to. Yeah, I mean I see what they're doing, but yeah, I don't think, think it's necessary. Um, and I mean I like Cody Rhodes; he's a good wrestler, but I don't think he's as good as he thinks he is. 
that makes sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense, and I agree with you. I do. I I, I think Cody Rhodes is a, 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 a an okay wrestler. I think he's you know he's not brilliant, uh, but he's not shit at the same time. He's just a good wrestler. Yeah, I feel the same about uh, Sean Spears as well. Tim yeah, Lundin. I mean, like, like we said last week, I mean, I feel the same about Sean Spears. And already, I mean, he got some heat last night. He got some booze and stuff. Hmm. But for the most part, the crowd did not give two shits about his match. <laughs> yeah. And or him being in the match. Yeah. It could yeah. have been anyone else. Uh, you know, they've got some real superstars there. MJF, unbelievable. Kenny Omega, yeah, best right. wrestler in the world, or at least one of. Mm. And the foundations really are there. Um, and I, I think when they when they get to TV, I think I, I'd be really interested to see how they get some of them characters over. Because yeah. um, I was saying, watching the show last night, and I was saying, um, imagine a wrestler called Luchasaurus in WWE. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would never Ima- just imagine it. Um, it, people, it would happen, but it would be some it, jobber just brought in for no reason. Yeah, and people <laughs> would take the piss out of it because it's yeah. a stupid name. Yeah. But the dude is jacked, and he's a great wrestler. So yeah, I'm not sure. taking him, the, anything away from his him or his ability, but the character sucks. Yeah. Like the, the name Jungle Boy sucks. <laughs> like just, Jungle Boy, yeah. You know, like um, those guys, uh, I think they're called the Dark Order. They have like the, the, the dude, little dudes in masks like running around with them. Oh, yeah. Like, that gimmick is weird, and that would be taking the piss out of in WWE. Hmm. But because everybody is so desperately seeking an alternative, they'll cheer for anything that is... That is not WWE. Yeah. Anything that these sure. guys shit together, <laughs> um, people are like, yeah, yeah, fucking AW, AW. Oh, the, it's, it's way better than WWE. It's like, yeah. Uh, is it? Is it better yeah. than WWE? I watched two matches of the Evolve show this morning and instantly I enjoyed it more than AW. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch that. And I just, I just think, um, like, they do have great talent, and they can be a competitor. Yeah, I mean, in a few years, in a few like months of, or years of being like, on TV, they can maybe one day they can be better or as good as WWE. But right now, it's it's not there, not yet. I I think it's years as opposed to months. Yeah, I mean, to 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 think that they could come straight out of the gates with uh, phenomenal TV and an instant competitor to WWE, um, I, I it's just it's just foolish. I think. Um, yeah. don't get me wrong it's great to have an alternative uh, and it really is and they the, you know that the hype behind them is is real you know oh yeah for sure but um there's a lot of creases to iron out that i think people would get sick of very quickly like people yeah. people will start to see through it because people want to destroy things these days yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> they're behind aw right now because it's because it's fresh and it's new and it isn't WWE because the cool thing to do at the minute is hate WWE. Pretty much. But I would rather see Baron Corbin than Luchasaurus. Yeah, I think I would agree with that as well. Um, you know, like that, the the, the uh, Chima who fought Kenny Omega yesterday, he's an absolute wrestling legend, of course. Mm. But outside of AEW... Had you heard of Shima before? Nope. No. No one had. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody who is watching AEW right now, unless they're a complete and total wrestling nerd, right? <laughs> and watch everything going because they never leave their house. <laughs> they're the people that have heard of Shima and they're like, yeah, this is going to be amazing. Wrestling legend. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm really not. No, of course not. But um, if, you th- if you think, like if you were hyped for these matches beforehand... You're kidding yourself. <laughs> yeah, these five, five people I've never heard of are going to be in the match. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, outside of this country, not many people have, have seen Jimmy Havoc. Yeah, exactly. I'm delighted that he's in AEW and getting that spotlight. Yeah, yeah. But people haven't looked at that car and go, can't wait to see Jimmy Havoc tonight. <laughs> oh, in America, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Those that are so desperately seeking an alternative to WWE. Exactly. So uh, I thought last night's show was good. I thought it was way too long. Um, it, I mean, it start, the pre-show started at half 12 here, yeah. and the show finished just shy of 5 o'clock in the morning. Ooh, that's what, four and a half hours? Jesus. Uh, yeah, and too you long. know, this is another thing. People have a go at WWE for putting on these long shows 
But you could tell but by the end of the show, the crowd were just like, all right, okay, we've seen some great matches. We really have. But no, this is this is too long. This is too much. Yeah, it's yeah. To say it's like people complain that WWE shows are way too long, and then yeah, they put on like a five-hour-long show. It's like well, yeah, you could, <laughs> and they think it's like yeah, it's awesome, yeah, but you can't you can't have it both ways. It's like yeah. oh, it was too long, or it's not. People are kidding themselves. Yeah, they, they really are. I mean, don't again, d- people listening to this, right? Don't think I'm trying to shit on AEW because I'm not. But I think the um, you're you're very right to be hyped for a for an alternative. But I think people are putting way too much stock in it too early. Yeah, for sure. Because if you do that and it doesn't start and take off the way that you want it to, like there, there will be people that when the TV starts will be like, well, okay, that was slightly <laughs> underwhelming. Um, yeah. But let's see what happened on Raw. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not against AW at all. I'm very excited that it exists and I'm excited for the TV to start. I don't think they have a lot of hot prospects on their roster. Mm. And I think it, it can be a viable uh, alternative and competitor to WWE. Yeah. But it's going to take years. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a while. It's not an overnight success. Um, the Khans need to remain interested and invested because, you know, Mr. Khan is a businessman. And if, you know, he doesn't see the returns... You can be as fucking rich as you want, but if you yeah. don't see the returns on something that you're investing a lot of money into, interest will be lost very quickly. Yeah. Um, and I'm very interested to see how Rhodes, the Bucks, and Omega do with booking the shows. Yeah, it's interesting for sure, because it's, yeah. I mean, as we, as you know, as we said, we're, like, we're so used to being like a certain way with WWE. It'll be mm-hmm. interesting to see someone's, someone else's take on it, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, WWE is an established business. You know, they, they, they have everything in place and, you know, they're, they're obviously they're going through a massive transition at the minute because, you know, it hasn't been good recently. It hasn't. So, don't again, don't think I'm trying to sit here defending WWE because it has been shit. But, you know, they're, they're, and they're, they're, they've recognized it and they're transitioning. And again, that's something that's going to take time. People expecting Bischoff and Heyman to come in and be like, right, this is their first night. This better be fucking awesome. Otherwise, I'm going to wear an AEW t-shirt and I'm going to listen to Chris Jericho's podcast religiously every single week and just buy over our steaks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to burn everything I own that has the WWE logo on it. Uh, yeah. Dumb. You know, um, that's going to take time. Bischoff and Heyman. Um, you know, they're going to be given somewhat of a clean slate from what I read and that's good. But again, it takes time. Yeah, I agree. So it's uh, it's an interesting time for wrestling for sure. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it could be completely wrong, and it could be good that AEW come out and be completely amazing. And I want to be wrong. I want, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want that. To, I want to be wrong. I want that to happen. I want that to be the case. I yeah, want AEW to you know come. I want that that first TV to really lay the foundations for something very special going forward. Yes, we'll see. and I've I'm under no illusion that you know that. That could happen, but I still think it's going to take a lot, a lot of time. Uh, because yeah, sure. you have to make the audience care about the people that you're putting on the shows. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We need uh, yeah, more character building. Yeah, more, people yeah. lose interest very quickly. It, I think what they're doing as far as uh, building story on these you know, random pay-per-views that they're doing is very, very good. I think that they are doing an exceptional job of that. Laying the foundations for, obviously, their next big pay-per-view, which is All Out, which is, you know, year anniversary or whatever of all in oh, yeah. and this will really be the coming of age for aw definitely um but there's a lot of work to be done a lot of character building to be <clears throat> to be done also um and if you want my brutal honesty i think partnering with that chart with the with owe the chinese promotion is all well and good mm. but people won't care about that <laughs> yeah I, pr- I guarantee it yeah you're probably right but uh, yeah, yeah, interested in that very quickly yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see where it all goes. Me too. Yeah, I, I, I want to be wrong. I want everything. I want wrestling to be awesome across the board. Yeah, we want, uh, we want good wrestling. That's what we want. But I've been watching wrestling for for nearly, you know, for nearly thirty years of my life. So <laughs> I think um, after all this time, I'm allowed to be critical a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, cool. so um, speaking of shit wrestling. <laughs> WWE Extreme Rules is uh, this weekend, and I think is going to be the, um, the the sort of 
the end of the not Vince McMahon era, <laughs> but more of the the start of the Bischoff and Heyman era. Yeah, because uh, Sport was back down this week were actually pretty good. I thought SmackDown Except, was good. I thought yeah, well, was SmackDown terrible. was good. Yeah, it was a bit weird. Uh, the main event was like Roman and Gary Garbutt, like, and they revealed to be um, Cedric Alexander. They should have won. Roman and Cedric should have won that match. That's weird that they didn't. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. It's yeah. so so weird. But I think um, after Extreme Rules, the this whole Shane thing is going to start to fade away. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I think Kevin Owens is going to be the the catalyst for this change. Yeah, uh, based so. on the massive babyface push that push. Sorry, that he's poss- probably going to get. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he came out and you know got that promo mentioning like people like Buddy Murphy and Askin, people like that who haven't paid any TV time and just changed every week during every segment. Yeah. So this is this is also WWE recognizing where they're going wrong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nobody in WWE goes out there with a live microphone um, off their own back. The, the, there's there's fed stuff there. Some people are trusted more than others, but you know, WWE would have recognized the hate that's online. Like every week, where is where is this person? Where's this person? I thought this person was on SmackDown. I thought this person was on Raw. All that sort of stuff. And if you've noticed. You know, like the uh, Kabuki Warriors were in a backstage segment on SmackDown this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura is now featured in a more prominent role and looking very dominant, I must say. Yeah, it looks awesome. It gets ballet, so, yeah. You can see change creeping in. Oh, yeah, but for sure. Again, I'm looking forward to it. Stage. Yeah, the fact that like, Nakamura... Like, Nakamura's done, like, nothing for months. He was in that uh, weird tag team with Rusev, but it didn't look, like, dominant or strong or anything. And yet this week, uh, against Balor, he's, like, beat him in, like... Like, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Yeah, he destroyed him. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, very cool. Look forward to that match at uh, Stream Wars. Yeah, me too. I just hope it isn't shit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's talk about uh, Stream Wars, shall we? Let's talk about predictions. Let's. Cool. Right. So the first match I have on here is the uh, Cruiserweight Championship match, which will probably be on the pre show, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely it's, uh, on the pre show. <laughs> yeah. Against uh, Drew Gulak, who's a champion, versus Tony Nice. Um, this will be awesome. Um, I think Drew Gulak is is just an incredible wrestler. Wait, did I get it backwards? Isn't Tony Nese a champion? No, no, Tony Nese lost it to Drew Gulak last time. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so I think Drew Gulak is, is amazing. And this has been, I think his title reign has probably been a long time coming. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's one of the best for sure. Absolutely. Um, and he can wrestle so many styles as well. So, you know, Tony Nese, you know, quite high flying. Uh, tight wrestler, but Drew Gulak will be able to sort of uh, match him and make the match really work like they did last time. I don't see Gulak losing that belt for some time, so I think no. it's uh, I think Gulak wins. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that one. Um, you can be, yeah, I just said he's gonna be the champion for a long time. I think so. Cool, excellent. Then we have the uh, last man standing match between Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. <sighs> um, this is stupid, you see, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> for, for many reasons. They fucking blew each other up <laughs> through the stage on Raw just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And like they were saying, oh, Braun could be out for some time. He suffered multiple injuries and all this sort of stuff, <laughs> including severe burns. Of course he did. Um, two weeks later, there's no way that Braun Strowman would be wrestling. Uh, yeah, I've seen stuff. Like Bobby Lashley was on this week's uh, Raw. What was Smackdown? What was Let's talk about that, actually. Why bring Rey Mysterio back just to have Lashley fucking mow through him. <laughs> I yeah, don't get it. It's a bit weird, but uh, I see. I see what he's trying to do. I think it's trying to make Bobby Lashley look as strong as possible going into his match. Yeah, sure, but do you have to do it at the expense of Rey Mysterio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rey Mysterio's WWE return so far has been, um, for lack of a better word, disastrous. Yeah, not great. Yeah, it's been rubbish. Um, I like Lashley. I always have. Um, uh, but I, I don't know. I have been Braun Strowman. They've they've really they really dropped the ball with him so long ago. Mm. Um, I understand the feud. Like two muscle men uh, is Vince McMahon's wet dream. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but um, uh, I think Braun Strowman will win. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one to call for sure. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Bobby Lashley uh, just to be different. And yeah, he's been pushed pretty strong. Um, so yeah, yeah he, probably actually, yeah. he has been pushed very strong. Um, but I can also see Braun Strowman coming out as like the the injured babyface who managed to pull off a tough victory against you know the bad guy. Or, um, so you go is, either way. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think this show is especially difficult to call knowing that change is coming. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you know, usually these things are planned out for months and months on end. But if Bischoff and Heyman are going to be given a clean slate, it's difficult to see how things pan out beyond extreme rules. So does Strowman now get a push? Yeah, or does yeah. Lashley get that push? And, uh, you know, it's, it's very much up in the air at the minute, which uh, I like the unpredictability because a lot of the time you can call a WWE show very easily. Yeah, yeah. I, not, I, us, I was, not us, we suck at questions, <laughs> but everyone oh, yeah, else. Terrible. <laughs> I've obviously Bobby Lashley after this going for like the uh, main, like, main title, like WWE Championship or um, the one you World Championship. Yeah. Go to the big, big push, yeah. I think, they should, I think they should have another draft. Yeah, or we'll just scrap the whole thing altogether and just have <laughs> everyone both both shows. I think a brand split is needed, especially with two people in control. Now, Fox is obviously going... To, um, sorry, SmackDown is obviously going to a different network. Um, so I think you need to establish that separately to Raw, which is going to remain on USA. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think a, a, a draft with drafts that draft picks that make sense as opposed to just fucking everybody everywhere, which is stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's daft. So people <clears throat> see superstars on Raw. People don't want to see the same superstars on SmackDown. Yeah, it's dumb, isn't it? Otherwise, what's the point? It's really dumb, isn't it? They're not, they're not separate shows. It's just WWE. Yeah. Like you mentioned, just call one WWE Monday and WWE Tuesday. No, <laughs> just don't even give them names. Just, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'd like to see... I personally would like to see Lashley win because I think... Um, I, I think it'd be cool to see him have a title run. Mm. But at the same time, I would like to see Braun finally get that push to the, the, the monster of a superstar that he can possibly be. Yeah. Tough one to call. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, then we have uh, Alistair Black versus Cesaro, which could potentially mm. be the match of the night. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, what I liked is that nobody was disappointed when it was Cesaro that turned up as you know the one picking a fight. Yeah, very cool. I think Alistair Black will win. Oh, yeah, me too. But I don't think that... Match. I, yeah, I don't think that damages Cesaro at all. Because no. I think they'll beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, I mean, it could be a start of a long feud, for all we know. Yeah, definitely. I'm totally okay with that. Um, I know Paul Heyman is very high on Cesaro. Mm. And they're both on separate brands, as it stands at the minute. Cesaro on Raw, Alistair Black on SmackDown. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I think... I think we see a dominant performance from Cesaro, but I think Alistair Black will win. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, so I think Cesaro's turning babyface, it looks like now, because obviously Alistair Black's been going to see all promos. Maybe. Uh, another thing I could see happening is, you know, I mean, it, it, it might not, and I'm probably maybe thinking about it too much, but, um, you know, like they have this stable on main event, the main event muscle men or whatever it is, with uh, Bobby Roode and EC3. Oh, really? I have no idea. That was made about in years. No, <laughs> uh, I, I don't watch it either. It's just something I saw. I, I saw it on the internet. Oh, uh, apparently, they're uh, apparently they're like a they're like a stable on main event. Cool. Hey, easy to get to, easy to be on TV, and that's fine with me. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Uh, not with that name. That's an awful name. Main event, <laughs> Muslim, man. terrible, awful. Yeah. But uh, I would like to see um, those three. I, I I could see those three as a stable. I think that'd be great. Yeah, being cool. Get them on TV. I on main that. TV, yeah. Um, yeah. Instead of uh, EC3 doing absolutely shit all. Yeah, looking bored and back chasing after the 24-7 child. child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's another thing I think they should scrap. Not the 24-7 title, because I like it, but the running mm. around backstage, it looks shit. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, so yeah, uh, Alistair Black for me. Cool, yeah, me too. Uh, so we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship triple threat match <laughs> against us a long, uh, long title <laughs> with uh, Danny Bryan and Rowan versus The New Day versus Heavy Machinery. Mm-hmm. Um... This is a tough one to call as well. Mm. I don't think New Day win because I do see them breaking up soon. Ooh, controversial. But it'd be Big E that turns. But I've been I've been sort of ringing that bell for ages now, so <laughs> um, I'm just going to keep ringing it until eventually it happens. Yeah, it could even happen tonight. Ooh, maybe. But I think I think that's too big a uh, too big of a thing to do on Extreme Rules. I think you probably save it for um, SummerSlam. Slam. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so I don't think New Day win. Uh, no, I don't. Um, heavy Machinery are doing quite well at the minute, and I, I like them. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's a, this is a tough one to call. I'm going to go 
with Daniel Bryan and Rowan because I think they've been really good. I mean, I don't like when they throw teams together randomly. Yeah. But I think they've they've done really well as tag team champions and they've carried the belts and themselves really well. Yeah, so I I think they'll keep them for a little while longer. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to go with uh, those two as well. Um, I do like heavy machinery, and I'm sure they'll be champion, champions eventually. But uh, I think it's a little bit too early for them. Just yet. Maybe, yeah, I yeah. think so. But um, yeah, I think uh, that they'll be a big, they'll be a big team going forward. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Then we have the uh, War Tag Team Championship match with uh, the Revival, who are the champions, versus the Usos. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that was a match. Okay. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> Neither did I. Uh, I think the Revival need to to win. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. I haven't had it long enough. The only other thing I can think is that the Usos win them and they are they lose them eventually to Gallows and Anderson. Oh, uh, yeah. That could happen. I can see that. Um, so it's a tough one, but me personally, I would like to see the Revival keep them for a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, me too. I agree. Um, also, the Usos have had like 500 times already. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, the Usos were amazing. Oh, yeah, great. And it's uh, what the, what they've done in terms of turning their fortunes around in WWE since they, they you know they, they did the heel turn, they dropped the paint and the uh, Samoan dancing thing, <laughs> Thank and Christ. you know they they really they really sort of took the ball and ran with it so to speak, and I think they're one of the best tag teams in the world. Yeah, I agree. Very cool. Yeah, cool. So we have the uh, United States Championship match with uh, Ricochet versus AJ Styles. So again, could be a match of the night. Easily. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, so good. AJ Styles is an amazing heel. Yeah, I love, I love it. Uh, he does a great job. Um, I really love Ricochet. And um, I, to be honest, I see this being a long-standing feud. Mm. I still think, and I still think we see Finn Balor join the club at some point. I hope so. That would be um, amazing. Oh, this is so difficult to call because obviously the club are riding a wave of momentum at the minute. You know, what the club, are, you know, Gallows and Anderson have just signed new deals and they've been sort of pushed into this uh, new role alongside a heel AJ Styles. And they need to add more people to it. Uh, and I'm 100% certain that will happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want Ricochet to lose the belt yet. Yeah, he hasn't really had a long, has he? No, I think Ricochet wins. But I don't think it's like a, I think it's a, it's like a, a smash and grab victory. Much yeah, like, I can see that. Much like on Raw. So, you know, like when he like they stole it with a small package, something like that. He doesn't win it with a 6.30 clean pins. Not when Gallows and Anderson are around at ringside. Um, no way. But I think, I think Ricochet wins. Cool. Okay. I'm going to be different. I'm going to say AJ Styles. Because, uh, yeah, I think, it's, I do think it's going to go on for a little bit. But, um. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Age of Stars will win via shenanigans with their guys now to me in there. Yeah. Um, again, this is such a tough one to call because you don't know how things are going to go going forward. Yeah. So it's it's very, very difficult. I like, To be honest, I like the unpredictability of it. Mm. Yeah, me too. Mm. Cool. Uh, do you know what I just noticed on this card on WWE.com? Uh, no mention of Finn Balor versus Nakamura, which is a bit oh, worrying. I thought, oh, I thought that was happening. Yeah, me too. Because like, they had the match on SmackDown leading up to it so I'm not sure why either they just left it off by accident or or what it's just but... not happening it, no, it better happen now the full Ben Finn Balor's done nothing for months well weeks at least it feels like months yeah he's no, won the IC title <laughs> yeah well I'll put it on there just in case uh, it does happen which is bloody better um, so yeah who do you think win out of that uh, Nakamura and Finn Balor yeah yeah Nakamura yeah I think I would agree with that yeah it seems to be going that way, doesn't it? Especially with their match on the SmackDown. Yeah, and I think it leads to a turn in fortune for, uh, and a t- turn of attitude for Finn Balor. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I hope to turn yeah. him heel and he'll join the club. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just it just seems too perfect, and it would be amazing. But um, <laughs> I would love it to happen, and I think it could. I just you know, again, these things take time, but um, I would love that. But I think Nakamura is uh, headed in the right direction for a change. Yes, good. Um, so it'd be stupid. Finn Balor's over anyway. Doesn't matter what he does. He's yeah. over. Yep. Uh, it's shit that he's not been used properly on TV. It really is, really is. But, um, you know, that can change very quickly. AJ Styles really hasn't done that much recently. Yeah. Not of worth. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, you know, you put everyone together and all of a sudden the hype train is back up again. 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. So you give Nakamura the championship, legitimize him as a real superstar, mm-hmm. and uh, you Finn Balor's a superstar anyway. Yep. Uh, so, but you need to establish Nakamura. Now that he's been squandering in the tag team division, doing nothing with Rusev, um, so you need to re-establish Nakamura, and I think putting the IC title on him is the, and then having him be dominant with it is the correct way to go about it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's too good to be hanging out backstage doing nothing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Both of them are, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So brings us to the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match, which is Bailey versus Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross in the handicap match. Yeah. Um, this goes one of two ways. Either um, Nikki Cross loses the match for the team, mm-hmm. which then leads to the Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss feud. Yeah. Or Nikki Cross wins the match for the team and yeah. wins Alexa Bliss the Women's Championship, and that triggers off the feud between Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's, uh, so yeah I've, I've gone for uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki for this one, with Nikki getting the pin. Uh, I think Bailey wins, but I think Sasha Banks comes back. Oh, uh, interesting. I think Sasha Banks, Banks comes back to help Bailey, and then turns but heel. then straight away turns on her. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be okay with that. Uh, so I think Bailey will win, but with the help of Sasha. Interesting. Cool. Excellent. So we've got the uh, WWE Championship match, which is uh, Kobe Kingston versus Samoa Joe. Again, very hard to call. Mm. Uh, Samoa Joe should win. Yeah, I agree. But I don't think he will. All right, okay. Let's go for Kobe. Yeah, I'm going to go for Kofi, and I don't know why, because I would love to see Joe with that belt. But yeah. again, it goes back to that thing that we talked about. I can't remember if it was the last episode or the episode before, when um, I said that it just always seems too obvious that Kofi is going to win. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a seem bit like they're too uh, scared to take the belt off him. Yeah. Um. So, and I, 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 if if that if I'm going to run with that forever, then Kofi Kingston will be the longest reigning WWE champion <laughs> of all time. But I just can't see them taking the belt off him. Yeah, I see what you mean. I just can't. Again. Um, as much as I I love I love I um Samoa Joe, and I would love him to be the champion. I just I can't see past Kofi winning matches. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you mean, and I agree with you, but I'm going to go with Samoa Joe just because I want to see it. And I hope you're right. <laughs> I, see it, I really, yeah. I will take the loss if <laughs> Samoa Joe wins. Yeah, I'd, I'd be so good. happy for that, but um, no, I don't see it happening. Yeah, cool, fair enough. Uh, cool, so we've got the uh, Extreme Rules winner take all mixed tag team match for the Universal and World Women's Championships. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch versus Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Also, add a stipulation if Corbin and Evans lose, they can never challenge Rollins and Lynch for the titles again. <sighs> There's a lot going on there. It's a bit. It's a bit. Now, did you, how fucking stupid was that mixed tag team match on Raw? Oh, God, yeah. So, Becky gets the pin on Lace, on whoever it was. On um, Lacey. Selena Vega. Oh, yeah, Selena Vega. Sorry, yeah. Um, and then, which eliminates her, but also she's still on the ring side. And <laughs> Becky Lynch just gets, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> it's 2019 now we know that intergender matches exist just <laughs> do it just pull yeah, the trigger on it it's it was, fine yeah it was Nina Vega doing her corners up the apron to people yeah. so and, and Becky Lynch threw, threw a load of uh, forearms into Baron Corbin's face yeah so it's, you know it's, it's fine yeah I know it's weird <sighs> oh, I had, um, Almas went into Becky at one point it's yeah like, just do it it's fine we like it yeah, it'd be great <laughs> There'll be some brilliant intergender matches as well. We could do, really, really go somewhere with it. Yeah. But they'll fuck it up and like bring an intergender championship in and all the sorts of other bollocks. You know what WWE are like. But, yeah. Um, also, this... no, no uh, women's tag team t- title match again. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, they existed as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this main event is an interesting one. Is it the main event? Uh, no, it's one more match after that. The, oh, okay. Uh, um, if the championships were going to change hands, that should be the main event. Let's um, let me yeah, let's ask the uh, opinion of someone else. Okay. So, um, Kaylee's just uh, walking by me, and I just <laughs> wanted to uh, tell everyone who she thinks will win the mixed tag team match. Cool. Okay. Kaylee, who do you think is going to win the mixed tag team match between Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, and Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans? I think Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans will win it. Why? Interesting. Oh, I don't know. I think they deserve it, and it'd really, really piss people off. 
funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would love to. Uh, I've always said sorry. Baron Corbin will end up with that belt. Mm. All right, there we go. Podcast oh, debut and uh, <laughs> already boiling everyone's piss with yeah. uh, her, <laughs> with the predictions. I, mean, I would love to see Corbin and Lacey win just to see the internet meltdown. It'd be amazing. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and for that reason, and that reason alone, I want it to happen. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I don't think it will, but at the same time, you know, they never get a title match again. Um, I'd like to, uh, it again, very tough to call. This is a very hard pay-per-view to call. It really is. Um, I mean, it should be straightforward, but with the changes that WWE are implementing going forward, it makes it a bit more difficult. I'm going to go with Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Nice. Um, (laughs) because I want to see it happen. Yeah, and because I want to see the internet meltdown, <laughs> and I want to see people crying out for uh, AEW and any other wrestling they can scramble to get their hands on because they don't like Baron Corbin. Yeah, you know what? I was going to, I was going to say Seth and Becky, but screw it. I want to go with Baron Corbin later as well. Just to see the world burn. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yep, me too. <laughs> cool. So I'm interested in the main event, which is the no holds barred tag team match with the Undertaker and Roman Reigns oh, yeah, versus sure. Shane and Drew. Um, I, uh, I think Kevin Owens gets involved somewhere here. Yeah? Oh yeah, for sure. And maybe costs fucking hell. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think the idea is for the Undertaker to fight Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. Which makes okay. oh, me yeah, think, sorry, that'd be cool. Which makes me think that Drew McIntyre will score the pinfall over the Undertaker. Hmm. Interesting. Side note: Have you seen the terrible T-shirts that they brought out for Roman and the Undertaker? I haven't actually. No. I the, the graveyard dogs is what they're calling them. Uh, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it now. It's awful. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. Hold on. Let's have a look. Oh god, yeah. Uh, that's pretty bad. I mean, I like. Mm, it's a cool little picture, but yeah, the, the yeah. The name's awful. The, the picture I'm fine with, but the 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 the, the name is awful. Yeah. Do not the... introduce them as that tonight. I have no, I have no interest in that at all. Yeah. No, thank you. Was... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Not good. Um, it's a tough one to call. Um, the Shane thing has gone on long enough. Oh yeah. By I've far. enjoyed him in the heel role. I really have, but. Kevin Owens is absolutely right in what he's saying in the fact that he's taken up too much TV time and TV time of people that deserve TV time, not an hour of Shane McMahon and an hour of everyone else. Yeah, he's like changing like 10 different feuds at once. He's like, <laughs> got Roman Reigns and The Undertaker, he's got The Miz, uh, he's got Ziggler involved in there somehow, um, uh, Elias is there as well. It's like, come on. <laughs> it's like, so either it's like, under- Everything revolves around Shane right now. Yeah, it does, and it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. But it, it's coming to an end, and for that we can be very grateful. Either Undertaker pins Drew McIntyre, or Drew McIntyre pins the Undertaker. Either way, whatever happens in this match um, is, you know, builds towards McIntyre versus the Undertaker at SummerSlam. That'd be cool. If Drew McIntyre should win. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent, definitely. And that yeah. should be the Undertaker gone. <laughs> yeah, agreed. forever gone. See ya. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Cheers, Appreciate man. it. <laughs> Fucking graveyard dogs. Have a day <laughs> off. Ministry of Darkness, cool as shit. Graveyard dogs, the worst band name of all time. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah. Is... Um, I think The Undertaker and Roman win this one. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think uh, Drew and Shane will be almost getting the win, and then um, we'll have Kevin Owens and maybe The Miz as well come down and help uh, and Jacob Reigns and uh, they'll win. Maybe Elias will get involved to Shane and Drew, and they'll almost win, and then, yeah, we're not going now. Yeah, it, it, it'll be chaos, basically. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, also, I think they might be adding Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler onto the card. Oh, really? That'd be so cool. let's do a prediction for that one, and Kevin Owens wins. Oh, yeah, easily. I can't, I can't see. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's no way Ziggler wins that. No, definitely not. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think, um, I think Kevin Owens will win that match, should it get added to the card, which I think it might. Oh, yeah, I agree. So it has the Extreme Rules really has the potential to be quite an unpredictable show. Yeah, it could be cool, and well, I think it could be quite. <laughs> oh, yeah, it could also be really terrible, and everyone who probably would normally win wins. 
Yeah, yeah. So if Shane wins hitting the fucking Van Terminator on um, Undertaker. Van <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> and, um, Van God, he calls it coast to coast. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, then then Shane just pins Undertaker clean, and everyone will hate it. But that won't happen, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I know. I think it'll be a good job. I, I think it'd be a quite an unpredictable show. I'm not going to stay up and watch it because uh, AEW has killed me. But at least I know that Extreme Rules won't be on until five in the morning. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not watch it tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, me too, yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, okay. that's uh, we'll that's Extreme it. Rules. Cool. Excellent. Good times. Good. Anything else? So, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I um, think. Oh, anything else I was going to talk about? I can't remember. Yeah. Um. Well, we're going to start a predictions league. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. Um. So we talked about this a little while ago. Uh, I put something on twitter and then all of a sudden people were interested and we were like oh okay well let's do this awesome. so we're gonna do a predictions league starting from SummerSlam. sounds good all right so we'll run it through to wrestlemania because that seems like the perfect culmination of it yep yep and uh, the winner will get something cool um in That's the form me. of a championship belt cool look forward to winning it thanks um you ain't gonna win it also will I'll so if you win. want if you uh, if you're listening and you want to enter the uh, predictions league either tweet myself or Finn or the Games and Graps Twitter. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, at Games and Graps. That's the one. At the Finn Steel mm-hmm. or at Sunny Garner on Twitter. Okay. Cool. Um, if you listen to this and you're not on Twitter, then if you just go to my commentary page on Facebook and send me a message or something on there, then uh, we'll get you added as well. It'd be, we'll set it up. Um, and we'll figure it all out. But we're going to start from SummerSlam onwards. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be something fun to do and make the pay-per-views a bit more interesting. We are going to um, incorporate the AEW shows and the NXT TakeOver shows as well, both UK and Amer- uh, American. Yes, good. So there's going to be a lot of predictions to do, but it keeps everything fresh. It keeps everyone interested. And uh, I think it, it'll just be something fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put links below uh, the podcast so we know like Twitter and stuff. Yeah. Oh, by, by the way, free to enter, no cost or anything like that involved. Completely no. free to enter, obviously, uh, because it's something that we, yeah, we think will be fun to do, and it's a great way to build a community. So, um, and that's what we want to do. We want to get the podcast out there to more people. We want to, we want to build a community around the podcast and us doing uh, our individual stuff, uh, just so everybody is all in one big place, and it's all awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Absolutely. So, um, don't forget you can catch Finn streaming uh, Twitch.tv forward slash is it games and grabs uh games and grabs yeah same software okay and uh, you can catch me doing commentary stuff uh, for turnbuckle tv and other stuff so yeah um for now this is the games and grabs podcast we are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single saturday sometimes sunday sometimes another day depends when we record it yes. across podcast services <laughs> everywhere everywhere and facebook um because we've just started to do that and it's seemingly been um received really well so yeah it's been well there you go but for now i'm sunny i'm finn and we'll see you next time guys take it easy goodbye thanks so much goodbye